and welcome back to Family Law Assistance. Now you may have noticed that um, this live is not the live that we had scheduled. So as some of you all know, um, we were going to have a live with my, one of my dear friends who is a family law solicitor. Unfortunately, I've got a feeling that she's in court, can't find her. So I thought, you know what? The show must go on. Now, one of the things that we were going to be talking about, Terry and I, was just family law from a different point of view. Those of you that have watched me and have watched me for years will know that what we do, how we do things here, is a little bit different to how a solicitor does things. And over the years, there's been a misconception that there's always been a an us and them mentality. And it nothing could be further from the truth. People are humans, we're humans, they're humans. People that we deal with in, in family court, whether it's professionals, barristers, solicitors, other people who do what we do. But I'm, I'm very much of the view that, you know, family law and getting the best results for you is much more of a collaborative venture. It's one of the reasons that we set up family law assistance and the way that we've grown throughout the years. So for those of you that are just completely new, who've just stumbled across this page out of the blue, or for those of you that have been with us since day one, you know who I'm talking to. I just thought I'd jump on here. And okay, it's not the life that you'd thought about, but part of what we were gonna talk about was the differences between what we do and what a, a solicitor does. So the first difference that um, newbies here, Samantha, hi, got your message. I know it's not the life you anticipated. <laughs> so the difference between what we do here and what a solicitor does is very, very different. We have been around for, feels like forever, but we've been around for about 14 years. And in that time, as you can see, we have really, really grown. We, we always cover the country, but now it's not just uh, me and Stephen running around like a headless chicken. So we've now got a whole team that cover the country. The big main difference is that we put you in the driving seat. So you represent yourself with our help. And it's a very different experience. So any of you that have gone through family law or are going through family law, you will know the difference between being represented, having somebody speak on your behalf and representing yourself. Now, the two are very, very different. And people who represent themselves, and I'm caveating this because the caveat is always that having a great kick-ass support surrounding you is a very, very empowering process. Now, I took, I had somebody come through to me late last night, believe it or not, and virtually in tears, and he had been represented. The problem what he felt was that, well, there were a huge number of complaints. Part of what um, he was sad about was the fact that the barrister that he'd taken with him on the day he didn't feel that he was that that barrister was representing what he wanted didn't have his voice for whatever reason and listen you know there are certain times when we help someone that we have to tell people what they need to hear not necessarily what they want to hear and trust me the two can be very very different but either way regardless of whether we win or lose if that's a thing <laughs> um, a case in family law the biggest thing, the biggest thing that we we have here is that we give you your voice. So there's normally three main differences between what we do and what a solicitor does. First of all is our cost. We're about a third cheaper than a solicitor. Secondly, we don't have, we don't act as your agent. So any paperwork that we help you fill out, any um, <laughs> forms, Statements that we help you complete, it's your signature at the bottom of it. Thirdly, we don't have an automatic right to speak for you in court. And simply that means is that you, you guys are the one that's doing the speaking. But I would caveat that again, because what happens and what should happen and what actually happens can sometimes 
be very different. So the way that I certainly work and the way that my team works, I don't care who you are, but we script absolutely everybody. Why? Because you're not going to get anything more emotive than your child. We here celebrate the fact that you are the case. You know who, what, why, where, when and how like that. You're not having to rely on a third party to get those details right. Now, over the 14 years, of course, that we've been doing this, we've noticed that this, what we do here, really bridges the gap between what a solicitor does and pretty much that support, the coaching side of things and the law side of things. I was asked numerous times by lots of family law professionals in court as to why I didn't go ahead and become the barrister or become the solicitor. And my answer every single time was, is the same. And that is quite simply, I don't want to. There's something really powerful about you being in charge of your own case. People who go through family law often feel that it's something that's happening to them. I don't know whether whether you've got local authority involvement or whether you're on the end of some allegations of abuse. Either way, family law is something that often feels like it's happening to us. Whereas here at Family Law Assistance, we're doing everything we can to just turn that around so that you're in the driving seat. You know, people's anxiety goes from fifth gear to first gear with a plan. And we really have <laughs> been there, seen it and got the court order. We are your arm around the shoulder. We absolutely get it absolutely get it so that we're there every every single step of the way what often happens in a solicitor environment or traditional solicitor is that you'll have money on account and uh, they'll tell you about the law and potentially say to we fill this application we we have this meeting we fill out this form da 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 da, da. we don't come, although we deal with all of that we also deal with the fact that this is your children, this is your house, this is your finances, this is your life. The majority of people that go through family court virtual doors have never set foot into a courtroom ever before. For most people, they've not had so much as a speeding ticket or a library card fine. And here they are, as soon as they separate from their ex, having to deal with divorce, children, finances. It, I get it, it's completely alienating in every sense of the word. That often and rarely is covered with a solicitor. You wouldn't perhaps necessarily go to a solicitor for the stuff, the life stuff, the stuff that happens on the day to day that you and I perhaps wouldn't take for granted. I mean, have you ever heard of any parenting books that parent children via text message or communication book? No. And yet there's a lot of people in the professionals in family law that take this for granted. One of the things we do here is we remove the shroud of gravitas that is often afforded to the legal profession. Here's the thing though, Family law is not about family law. This is not an episode of Suits. Nobody is standing there um, saying, objection. <laughs> no one is standing there really citing case law. Nobody's doing that. The reality is, is that you're in a room with a judge behind a table talking about how, how do you split the assets and liabilities in the pot between the two of you? How does, how is little Johnny going to go between your home and their home on a weekend or in the week? How do you separate summer holidays? So it's not about that. It's not about somebody um, stamping a gavel. By the way, that was never used in the UK. <laughs> Bit of trivia. <laughs> we get that here. It does not need to be jargon. And any of you that are currently going through family court will totally get this. You have the reports, you have the court order, you're in court looks like English, 
it sounds like English, why doesn't it feel like English? We also get that life happens. Family law is about life. It's not necessarily about law. Although I'm going to stress right here and now that all of our all of our trainees um, are trained trained paralegals and deal with all aspects of family law. But it's more than that. It's more than that. Anybody that goes through family law will have will not be used to somebody standing up and going, and I quote subsection one subsection three of the children at night and they no they're not and that certainly doesn't help you so it's just a quick live here pointing out it's not the life that you you had that we had planned and i hope we can bring you that live very soon the life that was we had planned was about talking about family law from a different point of view we here at family law assistance are very collaborative and it's not an us and them mentality uh, Mike because it's not English I know Mike <laughs> I know it definitely doesn't feel like it does it when people have the court order so in part part your listen your solicitor or barrister or people in the court and the judge they may very well be used to their jargon it's like with any business I mean anybody you any of you working in a job you've all got those abbreviations if you've all got those acronyms you've all got that legal jargon or the jargon that you have in your in your work and you know what it's like with with business jargon you think well because because we get it why doesn't everybody else i think a lot of professionals in family law can sometimes forget that you have probably never been in this environment before you know i was really lucky a few weeks ago to be invited to uh, women in family law and what I loved about this was the fact that it was extremely collaborative in fact the three that were cheering it and having a Q&A were two of the most eminent judges I've been in front of but it had paralegals people like me uh, barristers and solicitors all under the same roof and I found it fascinating just to hear how people are getting on with things how how because it's very easy sometimes for us to, you know, we understand that people, this is a foreign language and um, it feels very alien. And, you know, whilst you're in family court, you're not just having to decipher um, the process, the language. But hang on a minute, you've just been accused of God knows what and you've been called every name under the sun. And why can't you have just a normal relationship with your child? And well, hang on, you put that much into the property. Why can't you have that back? regardless of all of that it was interesting to see what it was like from the other side and part of the life i planned today was to kind of show you that as try to show you that as well one of the things that i really picked up on is this idea that everybody's really struggling with remote hearings um people think well i don't know how that can be but actually you know when you think about uh, reports being late social workers being late kafkas being late reports being filed late i mean did i mention late never mind the backlog and never mind certainly in divorce for example there's been an 18 percent increase this year I, i'm i'm not surprised i'm saddened i'm not surprised but one of the things that everyone seems to be suffering with is is, is this kind of zoom fatigue is the best way i'm going to describe it the courts by the way don't use zoom okay most of the court hearings at the moment are telephone hearings but that in itself is frustrating and i have to say it's frustrating for everybody it's frustrating when it's just a telephone conference it's frustrating when they're trying to do um a virtual um hearing we're on a on a video type platform the telephone hearings are they're frustrating because if you think about the majority of our communication is non-verbal well the, the court misses out on so much it miss it they miss out on the eyeball rolling people's body language you can you all know that you can tell what somebody's saying and thinking and feeling just by watching their body language if we've only got the verbal to go on that's tricky so in my experience it makes my preparation when i'm helping people even more important because it's important for example that the judge gets those documents and has a really good sense of the hearing a sense of the case before you've virtually stepped through the door the court hearings that are taking place on a virtual platform ugh, 
Now I know that the phrase in 2020 is you're on mute. Um, <laughs> I think the phrase of 2020 for court hearings is are you connected? The amount of people's internet problems is horrendous. People can't join, people drop out, people can't work the video. Ugh, it's a nightmare. Added to the fact, of course, is that a lot of the paperwork now is, is virtual and electronic. Now, I have always been one to bang on about the fact that courts should be dragged and have been now dragged kicking and screaming into the 21st century. In fact, one of my bugbears is, and I've almost kind of laughed at the fact that, you know, well, the court's not even reached the 19th century, let alone the 21st. Everything that they have is paperwork. Everything, which kind of goes a little bit at odds when you're trying to save the environment and work in a paperless office. Now, of course, they have to have um, documents that are sent electronically. And look, prior to this, the courts did not do electronic serving. The courts, generally speaking, would never look at a screen pretty much for anything. The courts would prefer something in a hard copy. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I see, if, especially if you've got a lot of documents, particularly in finance, it's a lot easier to just sift through the documents and point to things and, you know, because it's, it's very a physical, tactile thing. It's doubly difficult when you're directing the court to, oh, could you turn, can you turn to C79 of the bundle, please? Well, that might be 178 pages down. And anyone tried scrolling through a lot of pages on a PDF? Look, I get it. I get it. So part of the problems and the issues that the court are having is having to embrace that tech side of things super quick. Now, most people don't like change. They talk about change of children and the effect of change that um, on a welfare checklist that has on a child. Well, I'm telling you now, most people don't like change. So when it comes to having um, virtual documents, when it comes to having electronic documents, the court the, the court kind of can struggle. Sometimes Department A aren't speaking to Department B. And the other thing, of course, you've got to bear in mind is that none of the courts are singing from the same hymn sheet. I mean, Birkenhead County Court, for example, um, is insisting that, that all of their hearings are in person. And then you've got other courts that are trying to chuck anything into the new year as you possibly can. People are making it up as they go along. But I do want to point out this for all of you that are watching this. OK, when it comes to deciding who you have by your side, physically, virtually, metaphorically, throughout your court, family court journey. And I've said this time and time again to people. You have to feel comfortable with whomever it is by your side. Because in reality, especially when we go through the virtual family court doors, we're a team in there. So it doesn't matter that, that but you have to feel like the person by your side is fighting for you. One of the criticisms that I couldn't ignore is that a lot of people who come to us, um, not because they can't afford a solicitor, but, but they don't want one. And they don't want one. And part of the common criticisms that I hear on the daily is that, first of all, they're not kind of just getting enough bang for their buck. Customer service isn't brilliant. Um, they're treated like a number rather than having that personal touch. I know it sounds trite, but when you're talking about your children, damn right the person who, who's sitting next to you should absolutely care and should absolutely have you and your child's best interests at heart. Now, not to say that this job is a walk in the park, absolutely not. But there have been times when... Um, I will say to somebody, it's probably best that I don't believe you because I will be that devil's advocate. I'll be the person who asks those awkward questions. And when you want, when you're considering having somebody by your side, you want somebody that's going to, it's going to ask the thorny questions. Because if you just want a yes person, well, I'm sure your busy mate could do that. Your neighbour could do that. Maybe your girlfriend or boyfriend can do that. What you want is somebody to help you through the minefield of, of court, help you with that strategy. Because I understand the fact that the rules that we play with in court are completely are completely different to the rules that you play with in, in real life. And yes, I hate to demean it to such a level, but you know, it, often when we're in family court, it does feel like a game. It'd be useful then if you were privy to the rules of said game. 
So I'll leave you with this. Whomever you're thinking of having by your side, just consider how you're going to feel with that person by your side. Anyway, guys, I hope to come back to you really soon. Any, any comments, drop them in the comments below and have a great day. Over and out.